This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. There's Steve Kravitz. Hi, Steve. Hey, Alex. How are you? Steven Kravitz, actually. You must be perfect. Huh? Wait, wait, what's going on? What's going on? I'm saying I'm just Steven Kravitz, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm so good. Now, when when your mother used to chastise you, did she go, Steve, or did she go, Steven? Steven J. Kravitz. Oh, you mean come over here, Stephen J. Kravitz? Right. Oh, okay. I, my mother used oh, to. Oh no, no, she, she would just call me Stephen. Oh, okay. It was never anything else. No. Oh, okay, because with me it was Bolo. Right. Yeah, which I've told you before was my nickname as a kid. Bolo, right. don't do that. Bolo, stop it. Bolo, don't, don't do it. You know. And then when I how'd was, you that, how'd you get that nickname again? From my uh, uncle, Boloslav. See, <laughs> see well, I've, I've told this story before, but it's worth telling again. That as Jews, you're supposed to name your child after a dead relative. Right. A really upbeat idea. I don't know where that came from. Well, you're just supposed to use the first letter. Is it the first letter? Because I heard right. it was a name. No, 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 no. Like, I'm named after my great-grandfather, Samuel. So we take the S from Samuel and we come up with Stephen. Well, Boleslav was my uh, my uncle's name. He died, I think, at 21. And so oh, wow. They, they didn't want to name me Boleslav. I guess the Bennett came from using a B. Right. I never thought about that. I never knew that. Well, I learn something well, every day about my name. There you go. But anyway, they didn't want to. They they, they just nicknamed me Bolo. All right, and uh, uh, it's fine. You know, I was I, I was fine with that. You know what I didn't put up here? I should put up. Oh, I, I I forgot to put up your name so everybody will know. No, I have it. No, no, but I have it on the screen on the big screen here. Oh, okay. So that it looks uh, something like this. See, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. See, it says Stephen Kravitz. <laughs> you don't see it because it's what I'm what I'm recording, you know. Right, right. Yeah, like right. you can't see this, can you? Oh, sure, I can oh, see yeah, it. I see. Okay. Anyway, so how you been doing? I've been doing all right. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, yes, uh, uh, and a uh, yes, uh, it is Rosh Hashanah when we recorded this. Uh. A happy Rosh to you. Uh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. You know uh, what year it is? Isn't it something like 50, uh, 57, 52 or something? Or? 5783. 5783. I always just like to tell my friends, you know, when they go, oh, Jew boy, you know. Uh, well, you know something, you don't, what you don't like about us is we're from the future. How do you figure? Well, what's the year? Oh, 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 right. Yeah. Fifty-seven, eighty-three. Yeah. So we're we're from the future. Now today is Yom Kippur. Uh, t- well, today when we're recording this. Right. Oh well, this I better hang up on you. We're not supposed to be doing this on Yom Kippur. It's a high well, holy day. I'm fasting. Are you fasting? Yes. Really? I just had a bana- yes. I just had a banana. I for- <laughs> I forgot completely about fasting. Right. Yeah. But then again, I'd pass out if I had to fast, so, you know. But anyway, so it's it's the high holy days for the Jews. Right. Uh, and uh, it is, again, in that, in that wonderful feeling of depression, like where you name your kids after a dead relative. 
Right. Yeah. Today is the day for two things, honoring the dead. There's a prayer for the dead called the Kaddish. Right. Right, that they say in synagogues everywhere. Right. You know, come to think of it, I have Orthodox Jews are my landlords, so they probably won't come to try and get the rent today. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and uh, the other thing is the Day of Atonement. Right. You're supposed to atone for your sins. Right, for oh. the last year. Okay, so let's start atoning for our sin. What sin have you committed this year you want to atone for? No, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, really? <laughs> really? You, you no, actually did something. I'm, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm, I'm I, kidding. I, I mean, if, 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 you were, uh, if you were like back in your 30s again and you said, I have to atone for some sins, I'd go, okay, I'm waiting. Go ahead. Right. You know, but at your age, come on. What? You, you know, you're selling hardware and home goods, right? Right. Right. That's your biggest sin. Isn't that the truth? And and actually, 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 you're working at a place that sells wholesale, so you're okay. You have not committed a Jewish sin. <laughs> Thank you for atoning for me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. It's like it's like you know what it's like. It's like today's supposed to be like confession. Mm -hmm. You it, know, it is a Jewish version of confession. Yes. Right. Yeah. Except that we we just do it once a year. Yeah, and do we get it absolved? For atoning for our sins. For the, yes, yeah. If you do, yeah. Okay, except for our mothers, who will always make us feel guilty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Stephen, you shouldn't do that. You're going to go blind. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, can I do it till I need glasses? That's the old joke. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it worked. Oh, you know it did work too, because I don't I don't do this much on the air. But there we go. There you, there you go. Yeah, only these are filthy. I can't see through them. Wait a minute. Wait, here, here's some nicer ones. Here's better ones. Are these filthy? No, this is less filthy. Which look better? Do you know which one? They ones? both look good. The first one looked better. Really, you like these better, huh? Because they look, they look more, more, uh, uh, more like I'm wearing glasses. I'm not trying to thin them down or anything like right, that. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, uh, you've been working, and uh, you, you know, you're making a living. Well, not a living. Well, not a living, but it subsidizes my living. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you enjoy it, don't you? You seem to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind it. Oddly enough, I don't mind it. Although, from the second I walk through the doors to go to work, mm -hmm. I'm counting the minutes to when I'm going home. Oh, I see. Well, that's not a good sign. No. No, but uh, uh, it, but you, you're, you're you're checking people out at uh, Lowe's. Lowe's. I mix that up with Home Depot, but they're the same kind of store, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Almost identical. So you could perhaps go to your boss and say, I want a raise. And he says, what makes you think you can get a raise? And you say, I've been given a better offer by Home Depot. <laughs> well, then you know what they would say? Yeah. Go. Go to Home Depot. <laughs> go to Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a basic difference between Lowe's and Home Depot? I think Home Depot rents also uh, equipment, and I don't think we do. Oh, okay. So you're just you're just selling nuts and bolts and all that all that stuff, paint, right? You know, and, and appliances. Appliances. Oh, appliances. Yeah. Does Home Depot sell appliances? Yes, they do. Okay. So, but Home Depot will like if I want a big ditch digger or something, I can rent it from them. Right. Okay. Right. You guys don't do that. No. Plus, would you imagine trying to check one of those things out? Yeah. I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> I don't have a price on the uh, on the caterpillar uh, tr uh, right, right. digger. There's no there's no barcode. There's no barcode on that paylifter. <laughs> what am I gonna do? 
So anyway, so I mean, you know, I, I would think that if I had to get a job doing something where I was dealing with the public like that probably is more fun than a lot of other things you could do. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I, I have these guys in our building. They've been doing this for, we've been do we this has been going on for almost two and a half, maybe three years in which they are uh, uh, pointing the building. What that is is they go to, the, it's a brick building and they go between the bricks and they get the grout out and then they put new grout in. Right, you tell me this. On every brick in the building. This is a big building, okay. Is that right? How yeah. many apartments? I think there are 200 in this apartment house. Uh, but, is that right? Yeah, but they're huge. They're huge. Uh, you could take each of the, you could take our apartment and chop it up into two apartments, which they tried to do with a couple of apartments in this building, just to make more money out of them. But uh, they've been doing that for I don't know, they've been doing it physically for about a year and a half. Okay, the 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 stuff that protects the building or protects the, the pedestrians from the work, right? Uh, these things they put around. I call them homeless shelters because all the homeless people like to sit on under them. Uh, they uh, th those have been up for about three years, close to that. Oh wow! Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. But anyway, they do that, and then whenever it rains, they can't do it. You know, and if it's snowing, they can't do it. And if you know, right. whatever reason, like they're not doing it today because it's been raining on and off. Right. Uh, but here yeah, too. Yeah, it's been raining. But that's a job I don't think I would want. They get up on these lifts, you know, and then they uh, they sit there drilling all day to get the grout out and then putting the grout in. Is, How is, many stories is the building? Uh, this store, this building's eight stories. Yeah. What floor are you on? Eighth. Oh, you're on a you're at penthouse. Well, you could call it the penthouse. They don't call it the penthouse here. What do they call it? The eighth floor. The eighth floor. Uh, but uh, it, we have different windows than uh, the other apartments do. We have like big cathedral windows. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, look at me. Look in back of me. That's Those are the yeah, windows. See. see? They're like cathedral windows. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, it, 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 these are huge apartments. Uh, and um, But uh, all I'm saying is, to do that job, to be on that plank all day with some other guy, and you're drilling away, and you've got to wear the you know, the mask to not for COVID, but because you don't want to get all the dust in you, right? And and they're they're you know they're they're putting in the grout and everything, and they got to do that on every floor, on four sides of this building, inside the courtyard, and then on the outside of the building, they do the whole whole outside of the building. But imagine that, as opposed to at least dealing with people every day and checking them out at, at Lowe's. Right. You know, I, I now don't what know. Is, what is the reason they're doing this to your building? Well, the reason they're doing it, I think, is they have to, by law, if, if it's gotten to a point where they say, hey, this building isn't safe anymore because the bricks might fall out and hit people. Oh, I guess it's how many years. Yeah, and I don't think this thing has been pointed, as they call it, or grouted or, you know, done and I think since the building was made I, I don't think it's been done what year, what year is the building uh, 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 1900 1900 1900 this building's 120 years old this this apartment here is 120 years old 122 yeah so there my apartment's older than your apartment you're right. Mine was built in 1910. Was it really? Yeah. So, so these they're they're almost almost the children of each other. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yours is 1910. Right. What is it like? A, how many stories? Just four. Four stories, and is right. it like brick? No. Oh, okay. If it were brick, they'd have to they'd have to point them, you know. So. You know, anyway, supposedly they're going to be through by by December, hopefully. Because this place has been a mess for three years. 
If I showed you the courtyard, which is a pretty good looking little courtyard, right. it's been covered by this whole thing, you know, and there's dust everywhere, and it's a noise all day long with the drilling and the hand, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, it, you know, it's not easy, but that's the kind of job I wouldn't want. Right. You know, I think that would be hell. I would want to blow my brains out if I had to do that for more than two or three well, I days. I wouldn't want to be eight stories up on the outside of a building. Well, you know, that you get used to. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm a little. Uh, what's it called when you're afraid of heights? Oh, I'm afraid of heights too. I wouldn't go up on one of those things either. But what I'm saying, if you're doing the job. And you say, oh, hey, you got to get on that thing, go up eight floors. You go, okay, I'll learn how to go live with it. And once you do it, I think, even if I did it, and I'm afraid of heights, if I did it a couple of times, I think I'd be used to it. So would you. What happens when you see heights? Like, I play video games, and, and there are heights, certain heights where you're, like, looking. Right. And I get queasy with that. And it's a video game. You know. I feel like I'm going to fall. Well, I get this thing, this is whenever I see it, like even in a movie, if somebody's like hanging over a side of a, I get a little like, agita in my stomach. Is that right, a little yeah. knot in your gut? Yeah, knot in my gut, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but now here's the question. You fly, right? Oh, yeah. You look out the window. Right. That doesn't bother you, does it? No. You know why it doesn't? Why? And why it does if you look over the edge of a building? Why? Because with the edge of a building, you see a line to the ground. In other words, the building. The, you, you look over and you see the side of the building and it, right, goes, right, right, right. it resolves in the ground. That scares you. When you're in an airplane, you're not attached to the ground. You know, you have no vision of the ground and how high up you are on it because there isn't like a, a, you're not on top of a building. You get my, my drift on this? And that's why you don't get upset by looking out of the window of a plane. Hmm. You don't, you don't believe me, do you? No, because I believe <laughs> you because it, it happens to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything you said, you know, is 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 me. I mean, you know. I mean, I lo logically, if you're afraid of heights and you look out of an airplane, you should be frightened, right? Right. But you aren't. Right. No. Because it, it, you don't see a straight line to the ground. That's, I guess, the point I'm trying to make. Is that so? And you're, you're strapped in. You, you know, you're kind of like secure in your own little world. Yeah. Yeah. And planes tend to stay up in the air. Sometimes. Most <laughs> of the time. Sometimes. You, Most of the time. I don't know if you did this this particular show. We did a breakfast, a supper Schwartzman at the Fairmont Hotel. Okay? And uh, we flew up a whole bunch of advertisers from L.A. to be at this supper with Schwartzman. There's a promotion here. Come on up, have dinner on us right. at the Fairmont Hotel, and then we'll fly back to L.A., okay? So there were about, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 advertisers that we did this with. And uh, what happened was they were supposed to get on a plane, but it was late in taking off, so they got on another one, and they got up here. Had they taken that earlier plane, they would have all been dead because some guy tried to hijack the plane and rammed it into the ground. It was a famous crash, actually, in California, aviation history. But they were on the plane after it because we redid the, the, uh, uh, the flight arrangements. Right, the bookings. So we saved their lives. But, I mean, it scared the living daylights out of us because when that happened, we went, if they went on the plane they were supposed to get on, they'd all be dead now. And then we'd be known as the radio station that killed his advertisers. Uh -huh. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't bode well, does it? I mean, that doesn't pay the bills. No, no, no. Do you, do you ever get frightened flying at all? Not yet. Is there any point during the flight where you're maybe a little apprehensive? 
because you've flown a lot because you're a comedian and you're an actor and they fly you around and so on. Right. And I lived in Europe, too. Right. Well, what, you know, so I flew across the ocean a couple of times. What I, what I always do is I count to 45 as the plane is taking off. Why is that? Why 45? Let me explain it to you. All right. I'm listening. Planes, when they crash, the majority of the time that they have their accident happens on takeoff. In other words, they take off and they crash, right? And it takes place usually 45 seconds before <laughs> you're up in the air. So if you make it past 45 seconds, your chances of having this plane crash are almost zero. Right, right, right. So I count to 45. And if I'm not dead by 45, it's, it's all, all good. It's all good from there on in, you know? So, uh, but that that's one of my little things. I, I count to 45 as the plane is taking off. And uh, let me see here. Anything else? Uh, nothing else really gets me. Uh, uh, landing doesn't bother me at all. You know? No. Uh, and it, all I really like to see and feel is how good the pilot is at landing that plane. So he, right. he kind of, as they describe it, paints the plane on the runway. Right. And, uh, oh, my nose is, I, I'm dripping. Oh, God. Hold on a second. Got to get some tissues here. No. No. This is certainly great broadcasting, isn't it? Hold on a second, I'm going to turn off my sound. It's that time of the year when my nose starts dripping. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it's getting cold down here. It's getting cold here. Look at me, I'm wearing my sweatshirt. You're wearing a thing there, right? You do. A thing, that's right, that's what it's called, a I, thing. I know you don't have air conditioning in your apartment, but you do have heating, don't you? No. What? No, no, come on. Tell me that isn't true. Well, there's, there's a heater, but it's it's not sufficient. Okay, is it, what is it, is it a radiator? No. No, it's just a heater. Right. Is it one you bought or one they bought? No, no, it, there's, there's one in that's built into the, that's the heat for the apartment. My God, you know, in New York City, a, a, a landlord at 55 degrees has to turn the heat on. And it has to be sufficient heat to keep the apartment warm. Right, but that's an apartment. This this is this is like a house. Uh, okay, but it's being rented out as an apartment, isn't it? Right. Well, there should be some rules about them having to, you know. But then again, you're worried about being thrown out of there, aren't you? Well, I got a letter from them. And they want to raise the rent three hundred dollars a month. What? Can they do that? I think so. Well, apparently they can because they are. Right. Go, but can, yet they they haven't done anything to the apartment. They haven't. I haven't even met these people. Yeah, but I mean, all of a sudden, arbitrarily, three hundred bucks isn't there a limit to how much they can raise rent on an apartment? per year? Well, you kind of figure this is a pretty big two bedroom. Okay. So $1,300 a month is actually reasonable for it. Oh, so you're only paying, you're only paying a thousand now. Right. Can you make the 1300? If I get more hours at Lowe's. <laughs> Will they give you more hours at Lowe's? Uh, I hope so. Although I I buggered out on them today. I went into work. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm fasting and shit. And I kind of like went, you know, I should be I should not be working today. Well, you can use the Jew out on that one. I did. Yeah. I did. I only worked for an hour today. Oh, okay. By the way, this is not being broadcast on Rosh Hashanah, folks. But he used his Jew out to... I might Jew out. Yeah, and what do you do? <laughs> Just tell him I'm Jewish and it's Rosh Hashanah and I have to get home. 
I jumped it bar, but thanks for playing. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Oh, what we Jews will do to get out of work. Anyway. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, good talking to you again. We're done, huh? You look all bundled up. Yeah, we're done. We're done. You know. So, uh, you know, say goodbye to everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our good friend, uh, Steve Kravitz. And uh, uh, he's with us uh, well, about every Thursday, actually. And so it's been pretty good. Uh, I look better today. Here's what I was. I looked at the. You know, I want to see how good this camera was looking because I've kind of tweaked it differently. Okay, so it maybe looks a little better. All right, and uh, so I, I I was checking that out after the show and looking, at, and then all of a sudden I noticed with this shirt, with this uh, sweater, there was all kinds of little white dots here. There was like dandruff on it. So, but I'm doing this now before I go on, you know, and make it better. But anyway, we're uh, we're sitting around waiting for people to start calling, and there's nobody really starting to call. There's one guy waiting, and he's somebody who we love and adore, and there's a good friend, so we'll just admit him. What the hell, you know? Uh, and uh, let me see here. I'm gonna go to Zoom, and there we go, and there he is. That's uh, that's Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jeff Stein. How you doing, Jeff? Good. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. I'm doing fine. I, I was uh, a bit better yesterday than I've been doing. Uh, I've been feeling a little better. I stopped taking my pills. <laughs> hey, I know that. Yeah, and I I feel better. I feel happier and then up and you know I don't I feel like I could go the whole hour without feeling like oh boy am I tired you know. But I don't know what I'm going to do if I if I stop taking the pills long enough I might start needing them again. So, you know, who knows? But anyway, nobody else is calling, so we'll see what happens here. You know, <clears throat> I lost my uh, my watch today. Really? What kind of watch is it? You know, an Apple watch. Oh, it's an Apple know, watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, how'd it's how... it's got to be somewhere in Okay, the house. you have an iPhone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe you can ping it using the yeah. iPhone. So did you ping it? No, I having some a couple of problems figuring out <clears throat> what to do. They got twenty seven different questions. What do you mean twenty seven different questions? As to which one you have and which one you no, don't. No, no, have. no, 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 no. On your iPhone, uh, yeah. you simply go to. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Alan. Uh, let me see here. You go to uh, your uh, uh, what do you call it? Your settings, right? You know that thing, the little gear-like thing you got there? Yeah. Settings. And I'm then sorry. you go to, uh, let me see here. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember now where we do it. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Find, oh, find, go to, type in at the top, find my. Okay. Find my, and it should say, find my iPhone. All right? Okay. Am I in settings right now? Yeah. Now it should. Does this look right? Yeah. Let me see here. That's not what I want. It's the wrong. I just want find my. What are you oh, to here, do? here. Hit find my. Yeah. We're trying to get his phone to ping. Uh, oh well. Find my phone is on. Does it say find my phone is on? Which one is settings? <laughs> It, it's the little gray thing with the, the, the gear. Spoke and yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Gear. I yeah. got this other circle thing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out uh, where how I can see. Here's how, uh, what I can do with how I can find the phone. Is I can do it with my. If you had your watch, you could find your phone because you just go up here, and then you go to the phone and you push this. <laughs> hear that? So yeah, I hear you. Yeah, with the watch, I can find my phone anywhere in the house. And they changed this bell, to, so it really, like, listen to that. Yeah. yeah. I can find the settings. Either, yeah. Yeah, find my, well, find my, oh, I know where it is. Here, just, I, I, just go to find my. 
on your desktop. Okay. okay. You see that find my? You see? I'm writing it in there. Find my. Yeah. F I N D. Yeah, yeah, F I N D. My. Mm -hmm. M Y. Yeah. Find my. Yeah. It's actually it's on your it's a, it is a, um, a what do you call it, an icon on your on your okay. desktop. But, so I, yeah. I I find my phone. Yeah, and then you go over to devices. It's, yeah, but don't I want to go to my ri my wrist watch or something like that no, first? No, 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 because you don't know where your watch is. You're trying to find your watch, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Find my watch. Well, it says my Apple Watch is now, oh, zero miles. Okay. <laughs> Alex's watch, and then I can play a sound on my watch, uh, excuse me, on my watch, and here we go. Come on. It's a, it's, it's playing sound, but I don't hear it. I hear it. It's hop on the gear. There we go. Uh, no, I don't. Boy, that's not much of a. I can't hear it. That's not much of a sound. No, I don't hear anything. Okay, no. anyway. Do you see where it says there, uh, devices? Uh-huh. Huh? <coughs> yep. ah, this is great programming. Oh, this is fun, right? You know, Let's I'm, not I'm, do this. Yeah. Come on, this is no fun for you guys. Anyway, that's the way you do it. Can, what? can I ask what you're trying to do, Jeff? He's trying to find his watch. My okay. watch. Wait, but you're trying to use your phone to find the watch, right? Yeah. It, do you have blue? Do you have? I can walk you through this real quick. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I want to hear this one. This is the blind leading the blind. Go ahead. Okay. Here we so go. if you go to settings, can you open settings? Oh. No, you don't need That's settings. Wrong. But you don't need settings. Oh, you don't. There oh, is okay. a app on your top of your phone that's called Find My. Do you Not see it there phone. at all? It, it has like, it looks like it has a circle with like, it almost looks like a radar screen is the, really. is the icon. Yeah. And it says, my, find my. Find. F-I-N-D? Yes. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't have it either, Jeff. Is Pamela around? No. <laughs> no, she's asleep. Uh, Did you lose Find her? my. Find my. Watch. Oh, I should say right. No, find my. It just it's an icon that says find my. Yeah, there is. Okay, click on it. I did. Okay, what do you get? You get a map and stuff, right? It said find my phone. Yeah. Which is one of them. Yeah, but uh, I don't um, want um, that. Uh, um, find my. If you go. Um, uh, to uh, devices. You see where it says devices on the bottom? There are a bunch of different things. One says devices. Hmm? Yeah, I'm looking, but I don't see that. Oh, okay. Well, it should be. There. I see, like, there's a lot of alternates. <laughs> see, it says, pe it, says, it, says, it, says, it says people, and then it says devices, and then on the At very, the very bottom. bottom of the screen is what Devices. It yeah. Okay, yeah. click on devices. Hit that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now see where it says app uh, uh, iPhone. Okay. See where it says iPhone. Mm -hmm. Follow along at home, folks. This is a game you can all play. You know. That's right. No, but just you just find me. Look at find this. my. Look, look, see, there's a whole list there. You see that? And then there's a list, there's right? There's a list right here, right Apps. here. Apps. Yeah, well, it says devices. No, what have you got? Like this. What, what, what is that? No, that's not what we're looking for. No. No, you oh, well, forget it. He's um, on Google. Yeah, I'm not, you just gotta go to find my, and then you click on that, and then you go to devices, Along the bottom, there's several things. People and then devices is the second one. And then you hit that, and then you go to iPhone, to phone, and then you tell it to ring the phone. Right? Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, here, Brian Neary will help us, I'm sure. Yeah. Tell you what. what. Tomorrow I'll go across the street to the 
service place and they'll fix it in 10 seconds. What do you Across mean the they'll street. fix it? They got to find your phone and it's back at your house. Well, they'll do it. Is it in your house somewhere? Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, if I were there, I could get it to ring. And hi there, Brian. Hello. So far, is this a good show so far? Yeah, I wanted to call in before you guys got off this topic. <laughs> <laughs> How's your wife today? Oh, do do you see? Uh, do you, oh, sorry. Do you see this? Oh, yeah. I see yeah. It's different. <laughs> see this? Okay. Yeah. Ambiance back, and I, I I made her happy today, so. Oh, okay. there's a desk behind you. A white you desk. Always, you always want to keep the wife happy. And the keyboard got moved, or whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. oh, isn't that nice? You always the want to keep the wife happy. The monitor blocks the Ferrari sign. I mean, you got to pull the Ferrari sign over the monitor. <laughs> I, I need to get rid of that Ferrari and get my McLaren sign. Oh. oh. <laughs> Why you, can, you can't afford a Ferrari? Exactly. <laughs> they, they they are a big jump. Yeah, I I had a friend who had a Ferrari. He also had one of those uh, Diablos, the uh, Lamborghini, uh, Lamborghini yeah. Diablo. Yeah, that was the most uncomfortable car I ever rode in my life. I think I've told you this before. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just ridiculous, just ridiculous. Anyhow, Brian got on while we're while we're on the subject of uh, find your phone or yeah. find your device. Well, listen, it's a sad day today. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, mm. I'm still alive. Hmm. Trump is still alive. You know, the whole world does not revolve around Trump. Although to ask him, he it does. But, you know, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What, what? Well, now I'm not going to tell you. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be snippy about this now. Because you had to jump in with your little, oh, is it, is it, it Trump? So people getting out for uh, minor marijuana? Well, that's just... good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. But you know, it's just people that had to join. I, I he should have also pardoned people who sold as well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because here in New York, if you sold, you get one of the first licenses to open up a store. So you yeah. know, I mean, I wish I'd been a dealer all those years. Now you know, I wish I'd spent some time in jail. I'd be pardoned now. You know, <laughs> what the heck? <clears throat> you know, all those years of of trying to pursue a profession that only made me a meager amount of money. You know. I thought a pardon was only good for federal crimes. Uh, it, yes, it is federal. Okay, so if he got arrested for selling marijuana. Locally, instance, but he's asking the states to try and change their laws oh, okay. as well. I missed but, that part. But he can't, he, all he can do is federal. He can't, uh, right. he can't do anything else. That's right. No, it's a sad day today. Oh, but, why? Huh? Why? Oh, you want to know? Yeah. Before yeah. you were too so willing to jump in and give me reasons why it was a sad day today. Singular, one reason. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it seems as though a childhood friend of mine is no more. Wow. No more a friend or passed away? Is no longer going to be in existence. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's a radio station in San Francisco called KGO. KGO. Ah, but a boom. Man, I should have got that one. Now, as long as I've been alive, there's been a KGO. Oh, you're telling me KGO's gone? It's gone. Well, they're going to change format, though, right? They're still going to be there. But they're going to—they're not going to—they're not going to use the same name, I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, KGO it's, it, is News Talk. Which is it, no, no. It, it was—it was News Talk for a while, then it went Talk again. It had been Talk for 30 years prior to that where it was number one in the Bay Area for all of those 30 years. Uh, oh, I'm thinking of uh, KCBS, sorry. Yeah, because you're always wrong. Anyway, uh, uh, the, um, and KCBS, what, what did its call letters used to be? Uh, KCBS. Nope. I don't know what. KQW. Uh -huh. And what's the significance of KQW? It became KCBS. No, there's an argument. It was out of San Jose originally. And there was an argument as to whether KDKA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was the first radio station or KQW in San Jose. Mm -hmm. The first ever radio station. Okay, but anyway, uh, KGO, uh, I used to work in a building where my father used to work. 
He used to work playing in orchestras at what was then the NBC station, KPO. Get it? KPO? And on the top floor of the building was KGO. And these two stations represented the red and blue networks. Never heard about those, did you? And the big building there that is still there at, Madison, at Mason and O'Farrell, I think, uh, was the, uh, am I right about that? Yeah was the um, uh, Red and Blue Networks and NBC, and they opened it up, and I think it was 1938, maybe, 37, as Radio City San Francisco. You had Radio City New York, you had Radio City Los Angeles, Hollywood, and you had Radio City San Francisco, and that was it. And it was KGO and KPO, and they were in that uh, same building. So. Hmm. And as long as I've been alive, those, those, when I first was born, those two stations were there and in that building. And um, as the years have gone on, of course, uh, uh, KPO became, uh, KNB, K, K, became KNBC, and then when they wanted to give that designation to their station in LA, they changed it to KNBR, okay. <laughs> But KGO always remained KGO, and what's so significant about KGO is those call letters are three letters. Mm -hmm. There are very few stations that are three letters. Uh, I think there, mm -hmm. there's, um, there, I, I'm trying to think there are any here in New York. There's one in New York. Hmm? There's one in New York. And one I in New remember. York, W-O-R, W-O-R, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so if KGO gives up those, those <coughs> call, that call sign, that will be the end of, of, of a very important call sign that was only three letters. You know, and what I hate is, this is like Cumulus Radio, and they have absolutely no sense of history, mm. you know? Because if they had a sense of history, they'd say, well, we're gonna change it to a new format, but we're not gonna change the name of the station. You know, we're not gonna get rid of the call letters, but they're gonna get rid of them. The station for 30 years was, uh, uh, or 31 years, I think, was the number one station in San Francisco for every single consecutive ratings book. And then all of a sudden, one day, they weren't anymore. And the reason they weren't anymore is because they changed the way they rated stations. In those days, you used to put it down in a diary. You have to write down every quarter hour what you were listening to. Well, who does that? You know, they do it for about the first three hours. And then after that, you just... Uh, just before you go to bed, you just fill it all in, you know. Then what do you fill it in with? Well, the station you know the most. And that was KGO. That didn't mean KGO was number one. It was just the methodology played to them, okay? But then all of a sudden, they went to what they call people meters. And these are little meters people walk around with, and it senses what you're listening to. So you can't really lie or procrastinate, it just says what people are listening to. And the minute that happened, KGO wasn't number one anymore. And so all of a sudden they became panicky and they didn't know what to do and they went to, uh, they, they changed to, uh, I think it was all news and that didn't work. So then they went back to news talk and that was too late to try and revive that. And for the last, I don't know how long, they've been like the 30th station in the market. And so finally, Cumulus decided we're going to pull the plug on it. What they're going to do is they're going to sports bet programming. Mm. Now, you know, that there was a time when you couldn't even talk about betting on radio. And now they're doing sports bet radio. You know, so it's, it's, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's sad. It's really sad. And I'm, I'm sad about it. I'm not grieved about the radio station itself because they were a bunch of pricks when I was doing my show in San Francisco because they were doing everything they could to undermine me uh, because I was getting pretty good numbers in the morning and uh, nothing like they were getting, but they, they did things like, say, if somebody came to town and they wanted to be on my show, they had to be on KGO first. Mm -hmm. If they didn't do KGO first, then they couldn't do KGO. And so what would happen is, since I was doing a morning show, if you didn't do my show first, their first show at 10 o'clock in the morning was the first show they could have guests on. 
So they would wait around for that, but they weren't going to stay overnight in San Francisco just to do Alex's show. So I got robbed of a lot of guests because of this nastiness that they were doing, you know. Um, and I hated them for it. Just hated them for it. <coughs> and that scumbag Ron Owens, him too, you know. He was leading the charge on that. We've got to have a guest before Alex. Were, were, were most radio stations three letters originally? Would you turn down your microphone a little bit? Yeah. What, I don't know what were, happened. Were, were most stations three? Uh, that I don't know, to tell you the truth. I do know. Well, no, the first radio station in America was KDKA. Is that better on the microphone? Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, okay. Because uh, the, the radio station I listened to as a kid, the very first one was called KYA. Well, KYA yeah. was another one in San Francisco that had three letters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in those days, you could—I think if you wanted to change call letters and stuff, you could change it to a three-call letter call. Huh. But then after a while, hmm. they all had to have four. And the reason they had to have four is if you did three, eventually you'd run out of call letters. Mm -hmm. If you do four takes a lot longer to run out of call letters. So, right. You know. But uh, now, uh, a good good trivia question. KDKA is on the wet East Coast. And all radio stations that start with K are to the west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And to the east of the Mississippi, they all start with, uh, with uh, uh, w. W's. OK. Canada is C. Mexico is X. Okay. So why the split in the middle of the country? I don't know. They just decided that was what they're going to do. But there was one station on the East Coast started with K. And I just said what it was, KDKA, because it was the first radio station. Right. There was one that was W that was west of the Mississippi, and they did it because the, to accommodate the town it was in. Anybody want to guess? I'll give you a, I'll Washington. Give, and no, I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. It's in Texas. W A C O, Waco, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they gave it to him. But otherwise, uh, you know, that's the way the call letters were put and sent out and everything. But anyway, this longtime tradition of a station, where I used to visit it when I was a kid, because my father would play there, and I'd go there to meet with him, and you know pick them up and go out and have some beef jerky over at the Musicians Union Bar, you know, which is mm. down the street. <clears throat> so, anyway. And, and hanging out with your dad so much, you never picked up any instruments? It never interested you in music? I tried to learn instruments. I wanted to please my father, and he wanted me to be able to play an instrument. I think nothing more for the, uh, the kind of the... the what do we call it? The camaraderie. With not the, the camaraderie. The no, but there's a certain kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm bad at words tonight. Again, I don't know why. Last night I was in great shape. Okay, um, uh, 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 a certain uh, kind of thing that makes you learn how to do something and to excel at it and work at mm -hmm. it and so on. It doesn't mean that you're going to use that instrument to earn a living. But it teaches you certain, you know, things. Like dis disciplines. Or Discipline. Something. That's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. God, I'm losing all sense of the English language. Anyway, yeah, it gives you discipline. So um, he, you know, he tried to, t first he tried to teach me the violin, and because he was a violinist, he bought mm -hmm. me a baby violin mm -hmm. about this big. All right? And I just, I just plunked on it. I didn't. So finally, he got me a regular violin, tried to teach it to me, but nah, I wasn't going to go for the violin. So then I decided, hey, trombone might be a good idea because it, it's fun. It goes back and forth like this, right? And then the only thing that intrigued me about the trombone was the spit valve. Are you familiar with the spit valve? Of course, down at the bottom, yes. Yeah, because you, you, know, you play and you get a lot of spit in the trombone slide, and you got to get rid of the spit, so you then open up the spit, uh, tap there and yep. and I love that I, I, I love to play enough so I had enough spit to come pouring out of that thing yeah. 
Uh, it's I, always pretty if they don't empty the spit valve because it blows out on everybody. Yeah, but I didn't. I really didn't. Uh, I really didn't learn an instrument. I learned how to play a little bit of piano, and you know, I was very musical. I mean, I you know, I if you ask me to hum a song, I never was out of tune. I was. I had. I had pretty much perfect pitch, and I was had everything it would take to be a musician, except for the discipline. I, I just couldn't. Uh, you know, I didn't. For instance, I didn't want to. I didn't want to hold a violin like this for hours at a time. I don't know how my father did it. You know, and he had on his chin. He had ingrown hairs right here. You know, every every violinist I ever knew, I had a girlfriend who was a violinist. She had the same thing. You get a callus right here mm. from where you put it under your chin, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny. The, the guy who lives in the apartment, if I point this way, right next to us. Uh, sells violins and I went up there and he took me around and said come on in here Why? and he unlocked this door that he had locked with a, with a combination and we went in and then he went into a safe that he had to go in with another combination and he pulled out three violin cases and he opened them up and he said you know what these are and I said no he said these are Stradivariuses you would think it would be called Stradivarii, but no, they're Stradivariuses. Uh, and, and and I said, he says, here, you want to pick one up? And I said, yeah, sure. He said, let me pick one up. And I put it under my chin. And he said, you do that perfectly. How do you know to do that? And I said, I watch my father do it every day of my life. And I said, if he were alive today, I'd be calling him right after I leave here and saying, guess what I had under my chin today? You know, it was a 10 Boy, what was it? Was I think a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars Stradivarius? Mm -hmm. Amazing, just wonderful. I love it. We got your voice, but you are <laughs> frozen. frozen. I'm frozen. Oh, I'm frozen. Yeah. Well, I can well, take at least care. You got of a that. smile on your face. Now, yeah, you're smiling. You're very happy. Well, that's good. I don't know why this happens occasionally, but it does. And when it does, <laughs> I know how to handle it. I can simply go up here to video. I then tur turn it to another uh, thing here. I turn it to my old, let's say, virtual camera. See that, folks? Yeah. And then I, I go back to the uh, uh, the uh, camera here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Well, it's not doing it. Hmm. It just says no camera now. It says no camera now? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, oh. With some kind of devil worship symbol above it. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Usually I can do this. Actually, uh, I have, uh, Jews for Christians. I have no problem with it. Let me see. It's like a here. motorcycle. Video. And pro. Okay. What, <laughs> if, 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 what if I do a Logitech? Well, well there we do that. Blah, 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 blah. But that's Ooh, my other. Wow. That, that's my other <laughs> thing. Let me see. Oh, that that me, looks like a filter on TikTok. Let me see here. What? what oh, yeah, why is this not? Why is this not uh, doing it? God bless. You look fine right there. That's good. Yeah, huh? leave it. You're fine. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> well, this is ridiculous. Let me see here. Epocam. Let me see here. If I could then do here with the a, a kind. Your hair is fine, Brian. There we go. <laughs> no, that's the fourth time since we've been on tonight that you play with your hair. You're uh, lucky. I got no hair to play I, with. I I I, I can't unfreeze that's myself. Better. I cannot unfreeze myself. Adrian draws me like this all the time. Let me see yeah. here. Let me let me up. let me pull this. Mohawk. Let me pull I have a, I have a reverse mohawk. <laughs> okay. Oh, here nice. we go. Here we go. I'll screw you too, mm -hmm. Jeff. You got a full head of hair. There we go. All I right. think I think we're gonna be okay now. Fuller than mine, that's for sure. Wait a minute. Yeah. But I I don't get. Uh, I, oh, was oh. Alex still on the show? Oh. Huh? Man, <laughs> hold on a second. Was Pitcher just? We have our own conversation. Let me see here. He's over on the other side. There we go. There you're there. You're but fine. But now I don't. I but I don't know why my uh, my light. this your isn't. Light. Huh? No. What about your light? I've got the light on. But oh, I turn. Oh, there, there. They go there. Oh, wait. I know. Oh, I know what I'll do. I know that's right. better. I know what I'll do. Here we go. <laughs> but it's kind of a little color, different change color. Hmm? Your, your skin is not as washed out, but it's the room is darker. I don't know. There's something really wrong with this today. I don't know. I give up. Okay. Not even on the show. 
Wait a minute. Nobody's watching at night anyway, so okay. Wait a minute. Th this is ridiculous, okay? What what is this? I'm, I got this razor, yeah, yeah. I do uh, uh, this, and then it'll go boom, 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 boom. And then... Um, hey, you're so tall. Yeah, then we go here, and we go to uh, this. And for some reason, this is... Oh, I see what the problem is. Okay, here we go. There we go. Hey, Ooh. I told you the lights, yeah. Hey. Did we lose people? No, we didn't lose anybody, but we didn't get them either. Let me see here. Let me just do this a little bit. There we go. Okay. I, my, my violin story was, uh, <clears throat> so my grandfather came over here when he was a, a child, mm -hmm. and he played uh, semi-pro ball for uh, for mm -hmm. the uh, Oakland Oaks. Yeah. And uh, he was, you know, Italian parents and, you know, all Italian family, and they said, no, you, there's no money in baseball. You are playing the violin. So they made him drop baseball to play the violin. His wow. best friend went on to play with the Dodgers and was like in the World Series and all stuff. So yeah, so <laughs> yeah. And he didn't do anything with the violin, but the family, you know, Italian families. No, yeah. you got to learn the. You know, back then all the, the the Pacific Coast League, all Italians. So uh, you know what the, those work good for? If you don't like using them anymore, they kill spiders on the wall real quick. Violins. Yeah, sure, they're flat on the one side. And if you're lucky, you break it in half, and then you go into baseball. <laughs> what? Batter up. Son of a bitch. So how long was I frozen there? You just, just frozen for a couple seconds. Oh, there. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to mention it. I, I, yeah. I mean, I can fix it, but it, it, usually it fixes easier than it. Yeah. There's a little more yeah. trouble today for some reason. Yeah, that's what we thought. I don't know this why it even really freezes. Good. I have no idea. You know. I make Coca-Cola that doesn't have the... The, the fake sugar in it and, and make it taste like the real sugar without the calories. It's the second Coke I've had in a month. Mm. I'm not a big soft drink. What do you mean? Drink. What's your question? This Coke tastes really good. Yeah. I don't drink a lot of sodas. I can't stand the diet flavor stuff. This has sugar. It's 140 I, or 160 calories. Why can't they make diet that has no calories and taste this good. They do. Coke Zero is pretty much as good as regular mm. Coke. Really? Yes. Oh, I'll have to try it. Regular, most of the diet sodas that I've had. You haven't tried time. Coke Zero? No, I haven't. Well, then, you're, then, you, then try that and you'll see. Okay, I'll try it. Mm -hmm. I'm writing it, add that, it to That's my the list. answer to your question. Good. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you're stuck again, right? No. <laughs> that was I just thought I'd fake you out on that one, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I just, I don't know why, the, occasionally this freezes, maybe once a week or something like that, and I don't understand why, you know. Uh, because it doesn't have anything to do with my uh, CPU or anything like that. It's, everything's good, and it just, it just causes a problem, you know. So anyway, so anyway, getting back to the radio stations, I mean, I just feel so bad about uh, this. Uh, not that I loved KGO as people. They were terrible, horrible people. <laughs> they had a general manager over there who was a piece of shit, you know. Um, but, I mean, is, I mean, you, you keep saying that there's no radio and that radio is going to be gone, satellite's going to be gone. I mean, is this just the progression of that? I think you're probably seeing the end of radio, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's sad because radio does have a place, but yeah. it's just that everybody's just their their uh, ability to to listen to stuff has changed as to where they're listening to it, you know, yeah. and they're just not listening to it any longer on um, on on regular over the air broadcasting. They're going to podcasts, you know, except this one. Uh, <laughs> you know? I mean, look, I only got four people tonight. Look at this. You, know, you, have, you have three. There's three. Huh? Plus you is four. Three is four. Yeah. <laughs> you know, KGO has a transmitter that's been there since I was a kid. Oh, yeah. so, uh, well, I, as you're going towards the Dumbarton Bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from, yeah. Yeah. Right right north of the, the highway there, there's a the oh, transmission yeah. towers. It says KGO. It's been there since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a 50,000-watt station, which is wow. a very powerful station. You yeah. know, wow. it's what they call a clear-channel station. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, clear channel stations were stations that were protected at night so that they could go 50,000 watts at night, and you could pick up KGO almost on the East Coast. Wow. Okay. I could pick it up when I'm in L.A. Yeah. Uh, at, 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 at night. But what they did is they had stations. I worked at several, one or two stations that were daytimers. I don't know if they even exist anymore. I think they kind of changed all that. But they were daytimers, and what they were doing is they were protecting someone else's frequency because at night signals travel differently than they do during the day. During the day, they use <coughs> what's called a, 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 a ground wave. Yeah. And at night, radio uses a sky wave. And so signals can go further. So if I had, oh, just 5,000 watts, let's yeah. say, I could travel further at night than I could during the day. But if I were at, what was KGO? I think it was 10, 810. If I were at 810, I had to sign off at, uh, at sunset so that I would not interrupt KGO's signal. So, huh. yeah. <clears throat> and so we had yeah, to... I mean, ever since I was a kid, there's a little shack and some huge antennas, and I Googled it one time, and it says it's KGO's transmission tower. Well, if you, they're all over the Bay Area, I mean, oh, for various oh, radio oh, stations. Oh. Yeah, and they're usually in flatlands. AM well, stations also... are in flatlands. FM stations are on mountains. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good to know. I didn't know that. So, yeah. so the stuff on Mount Sutro mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Those are TV yeah, stations. Oh, are they? Okay. They're TV stations, but, but I think there are a few FM stations up there too. A friend of mine lives right under the tower on a road that goes around mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And they had to, in order to get cable TV into his house. The cable TV is the cable is this thick with all the shielding around it to get him to have service mm -hmm. because he's that close to all these transmission stuff. Wow. wow. So, so Alex, somebody just posted on the <clears throat> message board. I don't mean to, to break this on here, but yeah, Judy Tenuta passed away. Did she really? Yeah, seventy-two. Yeah. Wow. Did I? I and it said, "Did I know her? Yes, I knew. I knew yeah, Judy I quite, knew her, yeah. quite well. Yeah. And Emo, Emo Phillips, right? Emo Phillips. Well, they used to go together. They used to go together. And they were hilarious together. I saw Emo by himself yeah. one time, and I saw them together. What did uh, they say? Emo, what? To, yeah. No, they don't. They don't. I don't see anything on here. What it says? But uh, who is she? Oh, Seventy-two. Wow. Mm -hmm. When you start getting older, you don't realize these people that were a little bit older than you, and then they're older. That's crazy. Well, how old was she? Did it say 72? 72, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well. Yeah. A youngster. She was a funny comedian. Yeah. Who yeah, else, yeah. Who else did I? found out who she was. Okay, good. Who else did I see died? A John, Don Imus's, uh, 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 what do you call it? Second in command on his shows. Uh, McGurk, lady? McGurk, or something was his name. I never, I never listened to time as so. But he, he died. He died at like, uh, I think, very young, like sixty-two, something like that. Wow. Yeah. They, they just had something. It was like a channel two in the morning, like on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and they showed this is the, this is the uh, San Francisco, you know, the the comedy. What's the comedy award? The San Francisco comedian. <laughs> Oh, you mean the, the the comedy day? Comedy competition, the comedy oh, competition oh. winner, San Francisco comedy competition winner, and they had the guy there in his name, and I had no idea who the guy was. was like... Yeah, I mean, who knows? Yeah, and, and, and you know what's going to happen? What happens with those competitions, with the comedy competition, is it was always never a precursor of whether you were going to be a star or not. Mm -hmm. Like um, Robin Williams was in it. Mm -hmm. And came out number two. Mm. You know, who was number one that year? I'm trying know? to remember his name now. I used to know it, but I don't, don't remember. Mm -hmm. And neither will you, because he's totally un, un, not memorable. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, people who who come in second, third, you know, they do okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but. Uh, um, it. it uh, I, I never liked the comedy competition. I thought it was just horrible you know mm -hmm. and i thought mm -hmm. it was horrible for just the reason that i i don't consider being a comedian a competition mm -hmm. you yeah. know and and just because one competes against another and then audience says i like him better than the other one doesn't mean that he's good you know 
I mean, you you know who always used to do well in the comedy competition? Prop comics. Mm. Co comedians mm. would come out with props, you know. The Amazing mm. Jonathan. Or, 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 or do musical parodies. Yeah. Or you could win if you screamed. If you really scream, here's how you got, it really made it in, in the business. If you were a comedian who screamed, you immediately rose to the top because nobody wanted to follow you. <laughs> because you spoil the room, you turn the room. There's a way in which you kind of turn the mood of the room. And if you're a screamer, I'm sorry, you know, it's all over. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, Any famous screamers? Oh yeah, Bob Goldthwait was a oh, screamer. Bob, that's right. That's right. Uh, Did you say Gilbert Godfrey? Gilbert. Gilbert was just a kind of high voice. You know, I mean, he was. I don't know if I'd call him a screamer. Um, uh, what's his Sam, name? Sam, oh. Sam Kennison was the most Sam famous. Kennison was a screamer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Girl I went out with once was a screamer. I remember that. Only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Black. Uh, Louis oh, Black. Yeah. Louis Black. Black. Uh, when I first had Louis Black on my show, well, he reminded me that he had been on my show back years ago when I was at Live One. I think maybe when I was still at the Quake, or maybe it was when I was at Live One Hundred Five. And um, he didn't scream at that time. I didn't remember him because he didn't scream. Uh, and he said he just learned one day to start just being, you know, being mad. He's kind of mad at the world, right? And yeah. scream, and that's and that's what he says. That's when I got noticed. That's what it took to get me to be noticed. He said, "In fact, some comedian said if you just scream, you'll probably get noticed more." And he said it was right, and he said I became a success. <laughs> I love Lewis. Lewis is terrific, you know. But so Judy Tenute is dead. See, they're all going, you know. She used to have the accordion, and then when she would do a punchline, yeah, she would hit that thing hard. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah, she was, she was, she was brilliant. Really mm. good timing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like, I love emo. I mean, he's still alive, of course, but yeah, I love emo. I mean, his, I, I was he that sort of offbeat, like, like twenty four seven. No, when I would sit down with emo. I, I think one day, if I remember correctly, I, I, I would either corner him at a party or I think he came over to my apartment once. And we'd sit down and talk. Politically, he was a conservative. And he would just be, he would just, just talk like you and I are talking right now. And then when he'd go on the air, it was, I can't, I can't even do emo, you know. But uh, emo was, I think, one of the most intelligent comics. And his comedy was very intelligent comedy. I mean, he had this this weird, strange character he played. Uh -huh. But the stuff that came out of him was just pure brilliance. I remember one line that I think exemplifies what I'm saying is that he said, uh, I saw a sign on the beach. I'm not going to try and do his voice. And it said, no glass allowed. And he said, I wondered why. And then I suddenly thought, hmm. Maybe the sand is jealous of the glass because it's on a higher evolutionary scale than it is. Oof. Now, is that a brainy joke or what? <laughs> yeah. Because That's all true. glass comes from sand. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm going, oh my God, you know, this is not a stupid person's act, you know? Uh, Jay Sullivan. Who's Jay Sul Jim Sullivan? Do we know Jim Sullivan? Let's see if we know Jim Sullivan. Have we have we seen Jim Sullivan before? Are you there, Jim? Jim? Are we gonna get some porn? Or we, yeah, or are we gonna get some porn? He my, my oh, he, hello, Jim. Are you there? Are you there, Jim? Well, if Jim isn't there, then I'm gonna get rid of Jim. Okay. Okay. Huh? Goodbye, Jim. One, what he, he'd say. When he sees his dog drinking out of the out of the toilet, I'm gonna to butcher the joke, but he says he dog his dog when he sees his dog uh, you know drinking water out of the toilet, mm -hmm. it makes him laugh really hard. 
He says, especially when he's still on, when he's still sitting on it, you know. But he says it in a way that, yeah. oh my God. But he, you know, he was a brilliant comedian. His delivery and the joke, man, made you really think, and then you, it would hit you, you know. He, 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 really he was a comedian. He told me, I said to him, I said, so well, where do you live? He said, uh, out of a suitcase. I said, well, what do you mean out of a suitcase? He said, well, I keep all my stuff at my uh, manager's apartment in New York, but I don't have an apartment. He said, I'm on the road so much that I just stay in one hotel after another. He says, why do I need to have an apartment? I have, you have to clean up an apartment. He said, I don't have to clean up a hotel room. And he said, so I just, I have all my stuff that I need to store at my manager's place. And otherwise I'm traveling from one hotel to another as I do my act. Yeah. Well, here's a trivia question. Do you, any of you know who I'm talking about? When I talk about Emo Phillips, Brian does. Yeah, I, I've heard of him. I, I've heard him being performed. Yeah. But I think it's only once. But yeah. I remember him being very good. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, here's the thing about Emo. What movie did he write? Oh, my God. Hmm? Blow your mind when I tell you. What? Oh, there you go. Me, oh, what do you keep? Lottery. Do you keep every ticket of every comedy show you oh, went yeah, to? Yeah, I used to. You don't have any tickets anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't make oh, tickets they anymore. Have camel jams came out. Yeah. They said ov ovarian cancer was uh, Judy. Really? Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. So this was uh, October nineteenth. Wow, it's almost October nineteenth, October nineteenth, nineteen ninety one. Wow. At, uh, uh, what the heck? Oh, Cobb's Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, uh, no, movie he, he wrote, Meet the Parents. Really? Wow. Mm. And, and produced it. Wow. And I think he produced the sequel, too. I don't know if he wrote the sequel, but he wrote, he wrote the, uh, uh, the, I think he wrote Meet the Parents. Yeah, Meet I know he produced Meet, Meet the Parents. Meet yeah. the Fockers. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Um, but, well, the first picture was called Meet, Meet the Parents, right? Or was it Meet the Fockers? No. I don't remember, but anyway, whatever that picture was, he. You were. I, I was listening. So I was sick last week, and I listened to the show. And one one question you had, and it was sort of stumped you, was you said, uh, "Oh, you were talking to Bubbles. You're trying to figure out where uh, Rooster T Feathers was, the city." It, it was. I. I. As I remember it, it was in. It was one in one of the sands. Yeah, almost Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale. Oh, was Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that isn't a mm -hmm. sand, is it? No, but it's it's in between a bunch of sands. I forget a lot of stuff lately. It's amazing, you know? I mean, like, I'm trying to remember. I think it was called Meet the Parents was the first one with De Niro and Stiller and so on. I think the second one was Meet the Fockers. Yeah, Meet the Fockers was the second one. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, but... Some good comics, you know, but they're all dying. You know, I hear about another one dying, and it's you know you. you uh, why I, it's kind of weird is because comedians have a tendency to live longer than most other professions. Uh, because they can go to work every day, and they can continue going to work for years and years and years and years. But I'm really surprised to hear about Judy. Mm. Why does anybody get ovarian cancer today? Don't they get it and they can just mm -hmm. take out the ovaries and that's it? Or they just don't catch it in time? Don't catch it in time. Yeah? <laughs> is that the, is that the if, story? I'm not going to read these, but you can Google. You, people can Google Emo Phillips quotes, and hmm. they have a whole bunch of his quotes. Okay, give, 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 give me a couple. Only read one. A computer once beat me at chess, but there was no match for me at kickboxing. <laughs> yeah i'm only gonna butcher one up but yeah that's his humor you know it's so funny. yeah yeah so. very strange very strange yeah. man yeah but it, personally on a personal level you sit there talking to him he i used to have great political discussions with him because he was on the right and i was on the left and we would sit there and really have good solid and he was true conservative not none of this uh you know MAGA bullshit, you know. This was a true con he was a true conservative, and very intelligent. I just always sat around and you know went wow, you know. Yeah. Um, 
uh, what is it, screen record, record this computer screen? No, I don't want to do this computer screen. Where did that come up from? God, I hate it when I get these mysterious messages from my computer. You know, I, I mean, I, uh, it, it, the problem is having your equipment talk to you, right? And um, uh, I get messages from my oven. I mean, literal email from my oven. So, you know, it says like, well, uh, I got, get one every now and then that goes, uh, I need to be cleaned. Well, very nice. Thank you for sending me that, you know. <laughs> I haven't got that one yet, but I got the the refrigerator tells me he needs a new he or she or it I don't know what yeah. but uh, it needs a new filter. Well, here's a question about the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I see, I understand the stove because the stove is very it's very convenient because I cook something and I can see on my watch that it's cooking, you know, and and uh, that the oven is on and the or the oven is ready or whatever that kind of thing, right? Or I can even change the temperature on it from my phone. So I can bring the temperature down, bring the temperature up, or whatever I want to do. Anyway, you get to do all those things with the stove. But a refrigerator Wi-Fi? What the hell do you do with a refrigerator Wi-Fi? Yeah, okay, take care of the uh, the, the filter. Filter cartridge. Yeah. Yeah, but the temperature, yeah, you're not going to change the temperature. And, and it keeps oh. nagging you about, about replacing that filter cartridge because they want to sell you new filter cartridges, mm -hmm. right? And I you can't just reset because it has something on there that knows if you've taken it off. So I think you have to take it off and put it on and then try to reset. And I, the red light on my on my uh, 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 refrigerator, a little red light went on. I tried to figure out, what is that for? And I went, oh, I bet that's the filter. It's telling me I need a new filter. So mm -hmm. what if I if I go and I find the filter and I don't even know where it is in that goddamn thing, okay? <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the instruction booklet and find out where it is. If I go in there and I pull it out and then I put it back in, is it going to reset itself? Or does it know that it needs a new mm -hmm. filter? Or is it just telling me, you need a new filter because it's been in there for X number of days? I'll bet if you pulled it out and put it back in, it would reset it. <laughs> yeah, but now I, I need to find out. Enough. I need to find out where it is. Oh, okay. Google that shit. Huh? That's right. That's the answer to every question. Google that shit. Yeah. In fact, I can't. So remember. I, but I say stuff when I tell Adrian. Yeah, I can probably go online and say where on the. I can't remember what, what kind of what kind of refrigerator do I have? Maytag. I think it's a Maytag. It was the only one I could find that was wide enough to fit my elevator. <laughs> yeah, Maytag. And uh, it, just look up Maytag and tell me where the filter is, somebody, quick. Maybe if you're in our chat room like John Redshaw, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, Meet the Parents was first, says John Redshaw. It's also uh, asking about the red and blue networks. What was the reason for the red and blue networks? Because they had two networks. That was mm -hmm. it. And they called one the red network and one the blue network. And then when they decided, when the FCC said they had to divest themselves of one of them, NBC, the Blue Network, I think became NBC, and the Red Network became ABC. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, KGO was, I think, the Red Network. It, it might be the other way around. Somebody, look it up. Write me back. Here, come on. Do some, do some good in that chat for a change, okay? <laughs> Don't just sit there lurking. You know. I know. See, Craven says that he loves emo, but then that we've never seen this person before. Call up. Yeah. yeah. And then Boddicker, but I don't know if Boddicker's drinking tonight or not. So I was going to tell him to call, but I don't know. <laughs> says, I thought the only, w, the only... W-H-O Des, uh, Des Moines. Des Moines. Des Moines. Des Moines. W-H-O oh. is where Ronald Reagan worked as a mm. sportscaster. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what was the reason NBC had the American Biscuit Company? Yeah, okay. That's that's humorous. Uh, anyway, so what else is happening in the news? Uh, so we, we uh, our president uh, is allowing people who who you know, and that's a big win, right? Got federally arrested for minor possession of marijuana to have their 
you know, conviction Overturned. vacated. Huh? And, and that's a big win, I think. Overturned. Yeah. Well, it's well, not so much it, it's not, not so much a big win as it is an admission by this government that they've had these horrible laws for years for no reason at all. You know. Mm. You know, I mean, can you imagine marijuana still federally is as illegal as fentanyl? Okay? Or heroin. Mm -hmm. Or or any one of a number of other things. And, and quite frankly, I always found that ridiculous. Um, it was funny, though, the first time I ever bought, you know, you're always told that if you start on marijuana, next thing you know, you're going to be doing heroin. <laughs> and and I, uh, so I bought, bought marijuana for the first time from this guy that my wife knew, that Ronnie knew. And that we bought it, and uh, he was a hairdresser. Hairdressers always dealt pot, okay? <laughs> and the next thing I know, he's asked me, you want to buy some heroin? And I go, oh my God, it's true, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just well, what, did, did Slayton say after marijuana, all, yeah, they, they said the gateway drug, and they said all he wanted to do was make a sandwich and take a nap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, the mar marijuana was, it was made illegal by a guy by the name of... Um, um, Oh no! What, my mind is so off tonight. I, uh, um, I and I always used to know his name. What was that name. in the thirties that it, it became uh, le illegal? Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy who uh, I'm trying to remember his name now who who fought to make it illegal. And the reason he did is so he'd have a job. <laughs> you know. Uh, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I, why can't I remember that guy's name now? I used to be able. Well, why did it make sure he had a job? Huh? Because Why he, but we, what they did is they then formed a task force and a organization to go out and bust people for marijuana. And he was uh, the head of it. Ah, uh, I got it. Okay. Made so. his own job. Oh, here, here it is. A Forbin just came up with Harry Anslinger was his name. Harry Anslinger. Uh, Anslinger. Anslinger, not Anslinger. <laughs> No, but he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, he he did that all just for himself. And then on his deathbed, somebody said, "Do you did you feel that marijuana was dangerous?" He said, "I never felt it was dangerous. I just wanted a job." <laughs> and I'm going, "All the lives you made miserable, you son, the horrible son of a bitch, rotten fucking hell, you know? It was, just, it was terrible." Yeah, I would say it's time for you to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so Harry J. Anslinger, thank you very much, Forbin Colossus. You've become of great use tonight, okay? <laughs> thank you. Anyway, so I guess that's about it, you know. I'll just uh, start playing a theme song here. And mm. uh, there, there we go. Oh, there we go. There it is. I see. I just heard it. There it is. Okay. Hey, listen, thank you. Have I, have I been awake enough tonight? Yeah. yeah. I'm a little punchy, but I didn't get enough sleep last night, but... What else are we going to do? But I'm feeling I'm feeling much better these days since I stopped doing that drug. But I don't know how long I'm going to have to be able to go without it because it does what me drug some good. Uh, Pregabalin. Pregabalin. Jerry Lewis. Uh, nobody, if only three people called tonight. You know, I don't appreciate that, folks. That's a rejection totally of what I do here. The, the show is slowly dwindling into nothing. You know? Thursday is the worst night. Yeah, mm -hmm. it always is, isn't it? You ought to take yeah. you ought to take Thursday off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe maybe Wednesday and and Friday might be a good day to take off too. Anyway, Je to Jeff, thank you and thank you to Alan and thank you Brian. Appreciate it very much. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and uh, I will give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. There's our there's our citizen panel, and they're disappearing. Uh, Jack Bishop is next, by the way. He's going to be forming a new citizen panel. You might want to be part of it. And he does that on Skype at GabNet Live. Okay, GabNet Live. G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. Uh, so, Jack, have a good show. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow for the final show of the week. Uh, right here, 1030, same time, same station. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.